Welcome. My name is Corey Malcolm, and I'm the Director of Archaeology for the Mel Fisher Maritime Museum in Key West, Florida. In this lecture entitled The St. John's Wreck, Solving a Sunken Mystery, I'm going to provide you with a detailed overview of the history of this shipwreck project and the complex multi-year research effort that has gone into deciphering its secrets. Uh, this will be a three-part lecture. Um, the first section will talk about uh, the excavation of the ship, the discovery and the excavation. The second part will talk about uh, the conservation of some of the objects that have been discovered. And the third part will be uh, focused on uh, the interpretation of those objects. So uh, it's going to be a long one, be forewarned, but I think uh, it will be... Uh, something uh, well worth your while if, if uh, you are interested in marine archaeology. In June of 1991 I received a call from a man named John Browning and uh, Mr. Browning told me uh, of a discovery that he and his group had recently made uh, in the Bahamas of a shipwreck that had uh, an iron helmet on it, uh, some really strange iron guns, uh, an earthenware jar um, and a whole bunch of other things that he described and it sounded quite interesting to, to be honest and, and uh, we talked a bit further and uh, about my possibly visiting there and I thought well you know after a while what the heck uh, if nothing else it's going to be a free dive trip to the Bahamas so uh, um, I agreed to uh, go take a look at his, his uh, discovery Mr. Browning and his partners had formed a group, a marine salvage company called St. John's Expeditions, and uh, this group leased an area along the western edge of the Little Bahama Bank, north of Grand Bahama Island, uh, from the government of the Bahamas. Uh, the lease of this sea bottom allowed them uh, the right to search for sunken shipwrecks. Uh, they had been led to this area by historic research that uh, indicated there might be some uh, significant uh, losses to colonial shipping that happened within that area. As St. John's expeditions moved forward in exploring their lease area, they used a device called a magnetometer uh, as their princi principal search tool. A magnetometer is a device that is used to measure variations in the Earth's natural magnetic field. Um, in the case of a shipwreck survey, you're hoping that the variations are caused by iron, uh, maybe iron cannons or uh, iron anchors left behind by shipwrecks. Uh, this particular chart you see here is from a, uh, a computer-generated chart uh, from a, a survey from our partner company, the RPM Nautical Foundation, of a survey done in the Florida Keys. Um, but uh, St. John's was sort of, a, their survey was pre-computer. They were using a device for, or a system where you throw a cinder block overboard with a buoy on it, send a diver down to try to identify it or dig a hole at that spot. In the case of one fairly large uh, magnetic anomaly, the searchers of St. John's Expeditions uh, dug a hole and found a pile of very odd-looking iron cannons. Um, it was at this point that they decided to seek outside assistance in helping them identify what it was they may have found. Um, that was when I was called and, and I went to the site. and. I, when I dove in for the first time, within about 20 seconds after entering the water, I, I saw a cluster of breech-loading uh, wrought iron artillery that uh, was mixed in with a pile of stone ballast. And To me, it was immediately clear that this was a very early shipwreck. These were early cannons, uh, and uh, one most likely dating from the, uh, the beginnings of the uh, colonial period here in the Americas. Uh, I... Uh, urged immediately that the fellows from St. John's Expeditions uh, do no further digging on the site. Um, you know, there was enough to see to tell that this was early and, and that uh, uh, they should really uh, consider uh, what they were doing uh, because no matter what, this was going to be an important shipwreck. I submitted a brief report to St. John's Expeditions of my findings and 
Uh, they contacted other archaeologists and historians as well, and uh, these people visited the site, and everybody was in agreement that uh, this was an early and an important shipwreck, um, even based on the limited amount that had been seen. Um, and it was going to be a shipwreck that could absolutely, without a doubt, shed light on the earliest periods of the modern Americas. The Mel Fisher Maritime Museum put forward an offer to St. John's Expeditions to conduct the archaeological research at this shipwreck. Uh, we basically said that if they would agree to relinquish uh, any of the materials that came from the ship and, and uh, keep the collection intact, that we could help them uh, excavate and interpret the wreck. So uh, uh, after a fair amount of uh, back and forth uh, over uh, different ideas, uh, St. John's Expeditions uh, agreed to this proposal. And I have to say, uh, I, I can't think of uh, a case before or since where, where this has happened, where a group of uh, basically private shipwreck salvers hoping to find uh, you know, things to sell on the seafloor um, basically gave up essentially sight unseen uh, except for one small portion uh, a discovery that they had made and turned it over to a purely archaeological research effort and I have to say uh, for for uh, the, the men of St. John's Expeditions really uh, deserve everybody's uh, uh, you know collective pat on the back if you will because they, they really did something phenomenal with this uh, it was a gamble and I think everybody's really pleased With an agreement in place to start uh, to put together an archaeological research effort at this wreck site, um, we began uh, by outlining a series of questions that we wanted to answer about the shipwreck site, and you know they they they're pretty basic, but uh, they did serve to guide our excavation and really our, our whole approach to excavating and, and uh, interpreting this shipwreck site. So, uh, um, you know, again, pretty basic. How, when did the shipwreck, where did it come from, what was it doing, how big was it, how was it built, um, how was it loaded, what was put on it, what what sort of uh, technologies are on there that, that uh, reflect not only how the vessel was operating but other functions that it may have been involved in. Um, can it be tied into the historical record? Essentially, can it be identified? Um, and uh, what European materials were used to, uh, you know, quote unquote, conquer the New World? And uh, how is the influence of the Americas seen on this ship? I mean, that was a, a give and take relationship in, in both directions. And how do we see that? Um, what was the extent of any previous salvage? Was it salvaged uh, after, after it wrecked? Was it salvaged um, in, in more modern times, before St. John's Expeditions found it? And lastly, uh, how did the vessel wreck? What caused it to wind up where it is? So using that for a framework, uh, we were able to assemble a, a, a field plan and from uh, our discoveries there, a, a post-excavation plan. So. Uh, Basic but important questions to be asked.